Just preach loud, preach. You can do it. You think I can? You think I can. First Thessalonians chapter number one. Choir, y'all did a good job. And y'all sang out, sang loud. I like it. We're going to start at verse number one. The Bible says, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus, unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad, so that we need not speak of anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Brother Clyde, would you stand and pray over the preaching, please, sir? Dear Heavenly Father God, as we come to you, Lord, we just thank you for this another time that we can hear a portion of your word, Lord. And Father, we just pray that you just take these words now and use them to bring honor and glory to your name, Lord. And be with preacher David as he stands before us today, Lord. Father, we just pray that you just use him and him praying from on high, Lord. And Father, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would be in here today, Lord. And Father, we just pray now that you would just clear our minds of worldly things and let our names be on you, Lord. And our minds, Lord, and would be on heavenly things, Lord. And Father, we just pray that if there's someone lost here today, Lord. And Father, we pray that if they don't know you, Lord. Father, we just pray that this would be the day that they come to see. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Um, Paul is writing this letter to the church of Thessalonica from the church of Corinth. He's there with the church of Corinth, and now he's established two churches, and now he's wrote a letter to the church of Thessalonica. And in this letter, we're getting ready to study these ten verses that he wrote to this church. He calls and describes the church of Thessalonica as a model church. We know what a model church. We know what a model is. It's something that you should portray yourself after. If you're looking at a model of something, then it's teaching you what you ought to do. I believe if Paul called the church of Thessalonica in this letter a model, I believe that we can establish some things for Webb's Chapel Baptist Church out of what Paul said to these men and women in this church. Right. Amen. So let's look at what a good church and the title of my message this morning is: the model church. You know what I want Webb's Chapel Baptist Church to be as your pastor? The model church. Amen. I want every other church, local church in our area, to look at us and say that we're a model church. Amen. I want the world, when we go out and leave this place and we finally leave the four, the four walls here of Webb's Chapel Baptist Church, when we're out at Walmart, when we're out at work, when we're out at the doctor's office, when we're everywhere that we have to go on a daily basis... I want them to look at us, and I want them to say they're model church members. Amen. They're model Christians. Oh my, we're in trouble, ain't we? <laughs> Listen, if the church at Thessalonica can do it, we can do it, amen? Amen. amen. I want to give you, um, there are four types of people that make up the model church, like Paul said in this chapter. And these are the types of people that I want us to be. So, number one, y'all look with me at verse one through four again. Let me take a sip. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus under the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. 
Verse 4, Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. There's one thing or one type of person that God calls, and that's an elect person. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that word in Sunday school. It's talking about the election. Let me tell you this. A lot of Baptists hear that word elect, and they automatically turn it off. They say, I'm not hearing it. I'm not a Calvinist. I'm not going to listen to it. There's no such thing as elect. It's still in your King James Bible, my friend. Amen. We are an elect people. We are chosen of God. Amen. If we, God chose to come to the cross to die for you in the flesh of Jesus Christ the Son. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. Amen. And He chose to come down to die for you and I. We were chosen. Amen. Now, I still believe whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's right. I still believe for God so loved the world, not just the elect, that He sent Jesus' Son to die for the world. Right. I believe that He's not willing that any should perish, but that who? All. All should come to repentance. Right. It is not God's will for any of us to perish in hell. I don't care what you say. I don't care what John Calvin said. The Bible clearly teaches that there is one way to heaven and that's through Jesus Christ Amen. and anyone can access it. Amen. Doesn't matter where you come from, what color you are, what you've done. You may be the dirtiest, rotten sinner you can think of. Do you know what? God still loved you enough to choose to come and die on the old rugged cross Amen. so that we could be saved. Right. Amen. Right. I don't care who you are. God loves you today. God died for you today. He went to a cruel, rugged cross so that you could be saved today Amen. and have access to the throne room. But I can't deny the fact that God is an all-knowing God. Therefore, God knew. We walk around and we say, oh, God knows everything, but then we act like God doesn't already know who's going to be saved. Yeah. He knows. Before you get saved, what choice you're going to make. That's right. I'm not... A Calvinist say there's no free will. I say you've got a choice. But I know God knows what choice you're going to make before you make it, amen. Like I said last Sunday, you said, what about Jonah? Y'all know the story of Jonah? Mm -hmm. He ran from God. He didn't want to go preach to Nineveh. And to be honest with you, if you study out what Nineveh was, Nineveh is what today's Iran and Iraq is. That's right. Would you want to go preach there? <laughs> now, I think you'd run just like Jonah, amen. <laughs> Your flesh would want you to run just like Jonah did. So God said, you're not going to do what I want you to. Well, you have to suffer the consequences of refusing and not choosing to go. Amen. Amen. So God puts a storm on the boat that he's on where he's running from God. And jo they end up having to throw Jonah out of the boat because once they threw Jonah out of the boat, and notice this, in Jonah, those men got saved right after that. Yeah. Right. They threw away their false idols and their false gods. God's got a reason for Jonah running. Amen. Right. God's in complete control. Even when we're stubborn, even when we run from Amen. I'm, I, God is sovereign and He knows what's going to happen before it happens. Amen. So then God had him swallowed up by a whale. Finally, Jonah says, well, I think I'll choose to repent. <laughs> he said, I don't want to be in this. God didn't force him to repent. He could have spent the rest of his life. We were still chosen by God. God chose you. God chose to create you. Think about that for a minute. He created you as an individual. Amen. He created you as someone that He loves and cares for. I told you last Sunday, I think he even created the color orange just for me. That's my favorite color. I think he had me. In, we always say, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I believe we were on his mind before the cross. Amen. I believe we were on his mind way before that. I believe when he was thinking about flowers, he was thinking about some of you ladies that enjoy certain flowers. I believe he had you in mind specifically. And I believe that God thinks about us like that. We're a chosen people. God chose to die for us. Now, the first thing that we have to understand about our election is that, first of all, and salvation, salvation always begins with God. I told you last Sunday, I believe whosoever will can be saved. But I don't believe whosoever will at whatever time they won't can be saved. Right. I believe that God has to convict the heart. Jesus Christ said that no man cometh unto the Father but by me. I believe there comes a time when the Holy Ghost shows you that you're a sinner. And he reveals you to the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and three days later rose from the grave. Then you have a choice whether to accept or reject what Jesus Christ already did. And the Holy Ghost may give you more than one opportunity or it may just give you one opportunity. But I believe every single person at some point or another has the opportunity to accept Amen. or reject Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? But it begins with God. You can't be saved without God. Amen. You can't be saved without the Holy Ghost. You can turn over a new leaf. But when you turn that leaf over, you know what's on the other side of that? 
Dirt, maggots, and worms. Amen. Amen. We were out there at um. Wait, what were we lifting? I was lifting. I can't remember what I was lifting yesterday. Pot and soil. Huh? Pot and soil. Pot soil underneath the porch. I thought, man, this stuff looks clean on the top. And I moved that bag out of the way. And you know what I saw underneath that bag? A bunch of worms. They were wiggling around. There was a ton of worms in that pot soil. That's where worms go, amen, mm -hmm. in the soil. But you know what? It was real ugly on that other side. So you go ahead and turn over all the new leaves you want to. Without Jesus Christ, your leaf ain't going to be clean. Amen. Amen. You've got to have <laughs> the Holy right. Ghost living on the inside of you. You've That's got right. to have God. Amen. If he's never convicted your heart, you better pray that he convicted him. Amen. He Amen. will eventually. But I believe that every single person has the opportunity to trust or reject Jesus Christ. Not only does salvation begin with God when he starts calling you and wooing you. I think about woo. I like that word woo. The Holy Ghost woos you. He's calling you to him. I told you the story last week of my wife and how she thought that I was a dork. And, and she still ended up marrying me. She, she realized what, 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 where the good stuff was. Amen. And she married me. But had I went to my wife and wooed her and constantly came to her and said, Hey, will you go out on a date with me? And she constantly rejected me and constantly rejected me and constantly called me a dork and said, I don't want to be near you. I don't want to be around you. So I take a gun to her head and I said, now woman, you going to marry me or else? You know what? She may marry me, but she'll never love me. Right. That's not the way God works. God doesn't force anything on anybody. Amen. That's right. It's a choice. Not only does salvation begin with God, salvation involves God's love. You know what changes your heart? The love of God. Amen. When you get into a committed relationship, things start to begin to change in your heart towards that person. And when you go ahead and say, Lord, I surrender all to you. Lord, I believe you are the Savior. Lord, I believe that I'm a sinner. Lord, I need you. I have to have you. I'm committing myself to you, and I'm trusting in what you already did on Calvary. I'm trusting in the fact that you raised from the dead three days later to save me and get me to heaven. I'm now entered into a relationship with him. Man, it gets sweet. It gets real sweet. Right. And the love of God begins to work on you. And it begins to twist your heart. And it begins to reveal things that you never knew about yourself. Because God knows you so much better than you know yourself. Amen. amen. God knows me better than my wife knows me. Amen. God knows me better than you know me. Amen. That's the way God works. And He begins to change and twist and turn your life into what and mold you and shape you into what He wants you to be. Amen. That's the love of God. Amen. Because if God really did what we would do, you know what half of us would do today if we knew what the other half of us had done this week or had done all through before we got saved? A bunch of us would go ahead and throw us off and say, hey, I'm done with you. I've had enough. You're never going to do anything for God. You, you always fail. You're always doing this. You're always doing that. You, you're, you're, you're never going to be what I want you to be. How many of y'all wives think that way about your husband right now after being married all these years? He's never matched up to what you thought he was going to be. Amen. Don't raise your hand. I'm just kidding. God says, I don't care if you match up. He said, I'm going to the cross so that you can match up. That's the love of God. That's what changes a heart. That's what changes a life. Salvation begins with God. Salvation involves God's love. Salvation also involves faith. There's no pleasing God without faith. You've got to believe in what he did. You can't just walk around saying, hey, Jesus is alive. You've got to believe Jesus is alive. Hey, yeah, you've uh, you got to believe it. You've got to walk around not only telling everybody, but knowing the fact that Jesus is alive. That stirs me up, amen. I come to church this morning knowing that God did this. I didn't do it. Y'all didn't even know who I was. Ain't no way I could have done it. I didn't know you. God did this. Amen. amen. We serve it alive. A well God that knows what he's doing. That's in control of everything. We've just got to learn to follow him. Salvation involves faith. You've got to believe he can do it. Then salvation changes a life. We often think about salvation as just a way out of hell. But salvation is so much more than that. It's a daily walk. It's a daily task. Paul said, I die daily. He's talking about putting off this flesh, putting himself off so that he can get closer to God. He must increase, I must decrease. i got to get rid of me, amen? It, it changes my life whenever I do that and I allow God to fix the things that I've messed up. So we said that we are an elect people. Number two, we're to be an exemplary people. Y'all turn over to verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. As ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. 
ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and in Achaia. We're to be an example to this world. First off, we're to be an example in receiving the word. Oh, this is a tough one. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter where you go to church at. It's this way everywhere. Me and Jimmy had this conversation the other night where we just spoke a couple words about it. It doesn't matter if you go here or if you go to Midview. You can even go to Joel Oldstein's church. It's the same way. It doesn't matter where you go. You go to the biggest church you want to go to. It's the same way. It doesn't matter where you go. We are to be examples of receiving the word. When you receive the word, that means you have to prepare your heart for the word. Right. You know what a lot of people do? They expect the man of God to get up behind the pulpit and give them everything that they need. It don't work that way. That's right. That's right. You've got to be prepared. You've got to come in here and get prepared. If you're depending on me to get your spiritual engine started, you're in the wrong. That's right. And if I come here expecting you to sing and get my spiritual energy uh, engine started, I'm in the wrong. It takes all of us as a team, amen? amen. You've got to be ready to receive it. Yeah. How do you get ready to receive it? By tuning the world out all week long before you get here. Amen. Amen. You know what we do? We fill our minds with television. There's nothing wrong with Fox News. I'm not even going to say it, but you fill your mind with CNN News. Y'all notice the difference there? There's nothing wrong with Fox News. You fill your mind with CNN News. You fill your mind with, with uh, television all week long. Then you go out and, and uh, listen to the radio, secular music all week long. It's blasting in your head. It's going through your mind. Country music, rock music, rap music. Every, uh, listening to secular music all that stuff's going through your mind all week long <clears throat> let me put it to you like this how many of you in here eat more than one time a day I don't know about you but I eat three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day how many of y'all eat in here that many times a day it's going to be truthful snacks you know, nobody's whatever. wanting to admit it you bunch yeah. of liars <laughs> I got one I got one. All right. Here's what we do. This is this is what I'm showing you. Here's what we do. I don't know about you, but I get up. I didn't eat breakfast this morning. But usually when I get up, I'll eat breakfast. I'll cook me some eggs, liver mush, maybe go somewhere, get me a biscuit or something. I'll eat something. Now, usually get up 7 30, 8 o'clock, then you go get your breakfast, do your study, then you go get your breakfast. Then by 11 o'clock, I'm hungry again. It's time to throw a pizza in the oven, or it's time to do this, or it's time to do that. I used to work driving a van, and when you drive a van all day, that's all you got time to do is eat. So I would go and I would stop at, that's why I got my belly. You would go and you'd stop at McDonald's for a biscuit in the morning and a Pepsi or Coke, and then you'd go to uh, Burger King for lunch two or three hours later, and then you're sitting there waiting on a client, and you're right across the street from a convenience store, so you go get a Swiss roll, a Nutty Buddy, and a drink. And then you go, you go home, and wife's got dinner cooked and ready to go, so you eat a big dinner. And then about 12 o'clock, you get up out of the bed, and you say, hmm, I want something to eat. I think I'll have a banana. I think I might make me a banana sandwich with banana and mayonnaise, not banana and peanut butter. Amen. 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 Duke's mayonnaise. Amen. 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 All right. We're in good company. Okay? <laughs> All day long, I'm constantly snacking nonstop. That's every day. You know what the Bible's compared to? Bread. That's right. You, we said it Wednesday night when we, we started the Bible. We said you can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's right. You know what we do? Most of the crowd come to Sunday school. Sorry. A quarter of the crowd come to Sunday school. Not most. A quarter of the crowd. This is not here, y'all. But I mean, it is here. It's everywhere. That's my point. It's not just here. It's everywhere you go. It doesn't matter where you go to church. You can leave Webb Chapel right now and say you find a better church. It's the same everywhere you go because we're all stubborn. We like to talk about the Jews being hard-headed. Oh, my, we're even more hard-headed. Amen. All right? But you open your Bible, half quarter of the crowd for Sunday school. You get 45 minutes worth of teaching during Sunday school. Come to Sunday morning worship. You get 30, 40 minutes worth of preaching. You open your Bible a second time. That's if you came to Sunday school. If you didn't come to Sunday school, you've only opened up your Bible once. Because Sunday morning. Then half that crowd dies off for Sunday night. So Sunday night, you come back. Half the crowd comes back and, and opens their Bible up one more time. And then you go two days without the Bible at all. Most people. And then Wednesday night, you come in here and you open your Bible for another hour while the preacher preaches out of a little passage of Scripture. And then Wednesday, you don't open your Bible up again until Sunday when you're back in Sunday school. And that's not even the whole crowd. That's, like I said, half of it. 
-hmm. Wednesday night, half the Sunday night crowd is not even at church. That's everywhere you go. We've got to fill ourselves with the Word of God. Amen. You cannot depend on me to do it for you. I'm going to get up here and I'm going to give you everything I've got. I'm going to preach the truth to you. I'm going to preach it hard. And I'm not going to back down. Amen. Amen. But you've got to do it yourself too. Yeah. You, can't, you, you can't expect me to give you everything that you need. I think of a baby drinking milk when it's first born. Eventually, that thing gets a development and it has a desire to eat bologna. Right? It's not milk anymore. It's now bologna sandwiches. And then that child gets to an age where it desires steak. Amen? Mm. There's a lot of Christians that are still drinking milk when they ought to be eating steak. Amen. Amen. Okay? And that doesn't come from the man of God. That comes from you studying at home. Right. You can't expect God to fill you when you're already full of the world when you get here. Right. It's not going to happen. I enjoy TV. I enjoy it. I'm not going to lie. I like movies. We, we, we watch movies all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. The difference is you've got to balance this out. Amen. You've got to balance it out. You've got to have more word in you than you do uh, world. Amen? Amen. An example in receiving the word. You also need to be an example in following the spiritual leader. The pastor is the spiritual leader of the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. An example in following. Um, follow your pastor in the direction that he has for the church. Amen? Amen. Husband and wives. Here we go. We're going to find out who's throwing tomatoes in a minute. <laughs> you realize who the spiritual leader in the home is? The wife. Duh. I'm just kidding. The husband is the spiritual leader in the home. You know what you're supposed to do as a wife? And I know we live in 2022. And I know everybody says this is sexist. And I know everybody says all that they want to say. The truth is... The man is the lead the home. Amen. 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 The man says it, the wife does it. You don't agree with that, you don't agree with this Bible. Amen. Right. It ain't my opinion. You say, well, everybody's got their own opinion. I don't preach opinion up here. I preach Bible. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that the woman is to fall into subjection to the husband. Yep. If you ladies don't like that, you need to pray to God to help you to be able to like that. Amen. 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 Now, let me say this to the men. No woman wants to follow a man that's not worthy of being followed. Amen. No woman wants to follow a dictator. I don't know about you, but I like my country. I like the fact that I can get up anytime I want and leave my house whenever I want. I like the fact that I can do this and do that. I like the fact that I'm saved. And when God looks at me, amen, he, he, he realizes I'm going to make mistakes. Right. That's why he died for me, amen. Right. And God, sure, he pulls out the belt and whips me. He says that his children should be chastised, amen. Yeah. But at the same time, God's a forgiving and a loving God. Amen. Any man that's mean to his wife ain't worth it, amen. 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 You ought to, and you ought to lead an example to your wife. You ought to show her the right way. Mm -hmm. Don't tell your wife not to do something if you turn around and doing the exact thing you tell exactly. her not to do. Right. Shame on you, amen. 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 A woman doesn't want to follow a sorry husband. No. Children. I think they're all in chip. Oh, we got one. I see one. We got one more anywhere. We got one, two. Y'all should obey your parents. Amen. That means if mama says go wash the dishes, you go wash the dishes. <laughs> then you should honor your parents. That means if mama did not tell you to wash the dishes, but you see the sink full, you should wash it anyway out of honor. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> honor and obey your parents. If I got any more in here, I see one back there. Honor and obey. Respect. Mama and daddy are the boss in the house, not the kids. Amen. 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 A lot of places amen. let their kids rule the home. That ain't the way it ought to be. Mama and daddy's ruler. Amen. amen. It's daddy, mama, then children. An example not only in uh, our homes, but an example in following Christ. Everybody wants to sing, wherever he leads, I will follow. But yet when he starts leading, we don't follow. That's right. Every single one of us fell him on a daily basis. We should follow Christ by getting involved in the church. Not just riding the pew. Amen. Amen. That's what Christ did. He was always there. Amen. And he was actually kicked out of synagogues. Amen. And right. then he went to street preaching. And he went out on the streets and started doing things. He was never sitting idle. There were times when Jesus took a break. And I believe that there are times when we need to take a break. I believe if you don't break apart, you will fall apart. Right. I believe in vacation. I don't believe in going on vacation every week. And I don't believe in going on vacation every month. I don't believe in going on vacation every three months. But I believe in vacation, amen. amen. I believe there's got to be a time when you've got to break away from work. You've got to break away from the church. You've got to break away from everything that you're doing and sit back and like Jesus did it. And if somebody says that Jesus didn't, they're a liar. They're a liar. 
Jesus took a break. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we're so selfish because we don't feel like God is leading us where we think we ought to go. But we need to follow His direction for our life. Amen. Amen. Following Christ. An example in encouraging other churches. This is something that has died in our day. You men, I assume y'all went on that trip with a bunch of different churches, correct? Yes, I love that idea. And I'm going next year. I'm ready to shoot. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm going next year. Okay? You put that down on my calendar. I'm going next year. You're going to spend the weekend without me. All right? Okay. That's right. That, I like shooting. That sounds fun. Okay? Where was I going? Y'all don't do it. <laughs> Encouraging other churches. All right. Encouraging other churches. That's something that's died off. We have the mentality a lot of times that our church is the only church that matters. It's a shame. shouldn't be that way. Right. Every church is God's church. Every church, and, and let me say this. Let me put this in there. Every church that preaches the truth. Right. right. Not every church. Every church that preaches the truth, that's that Jesus Christ died on the cross, three days later rose from the grave. That's the only way to heaven. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. If they that's preach right. that, I'm with them. Right. Anything else, that's on them. Every pastor has to answer for himself and what he does with his church. Right. But you know what? We need to encourage other churches. Churches are dying all over the place and shutting down. Amen. And all we do is just move on about our business. We ought to be willing to help the community and help other churches. Encourage them. Go to revivals. I was at revival Monday night and Tuesday night this week. The only reason I didn't go Thursday and Friday is because we were moving. But I was there Monday night, Tuesday, and I heard two great messages. It helped me, and it was a blessing to the pastor that I showed up. He said so. Amen. Amen. That's the way God works. Support other churches. Encourage them. Number three, I've got two more. We'll be done. We need to be an enthusiastic people. An enthusiastic people. Look with me at verse number eight. Notice this. It says, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord said from you he's telling the people they sounded out the word of the lord of not only in macedonia and achaia but also in every place your faith to godward is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything we ought to be enthusiastic we ought to be enthusiastic about sounding out the word of god we ought to be enthusiastic when we're at work whether you get in trouble or not be harmless as a dove wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove tell the truth i worked at um NVR. Yeah, I don't work there no more. We could put it online. I worked at NVR uh, for about a month, and I would go in the bathroom, and I'd put gospel tracts in the bathrooms. They never did say anything to me. I'm sure they knew who I was. I had a guy one time come up to me. I'm talking about being enthusiastic about the Word. I'm not wasting time. I'm telling you what I mean. My old 95 Honda Accord before I got this one, I had bumper stickers all over it. Some people picked on me and said that the bumper stickers is what was holding the car up because it was so old. But I had all kinds of bumper stickers on that car. They were talking about Jesus is the only way. Repent and believe the gospel. There's no hope in the Pope. Only Jesus saves. If the earth is your mother, then we walk on your mother. All that stuff, you know, just to make people mad. But being enthusiastic, people would see me out and about. I had one that used to say that if it ain't King James, it ain't Bible. But I had one guy come through the drive through that I was working at Burger King at that time. And because of that bumper sticker on the back of my car, he came through the drive through gave me his number and said, call him. So I called him, and I didn't know what it was about. When I called him, and he said, hey, I want to sit with you and talk about the King James Bible. A bumper sticker made a guy want to give me his number, and, and we sat and had a discussion about the Word of God. Amen. He was already saved. We agreed on everything that we believed. Amen. Amen. What if he wasn't? And he had given me, and he wanted to talk to me. I could have won him to Christ. Enthusiastic. I, don't be ashamed of, of, of your church. Don't be ashamed of God, amen? amen? He's been there for you faithfully. We ought to go out to the world and proclaim that He's the one God. There is no other God. There is no other way. We ought to be vocal and loud about it. Right. We ought to be proud of who we are. Amen. Save born-again Christians, amen. Right. amen? Not walk around saying, I'm a Christian. Can I say that here? <laughs> a lot of people like that at work. Can I say that here? Can we discuss that here? I had a guy, uh, when I first started, he was the one that was training me, and it cracked me up. We got to talking, and uh, he was cussing every other word. This is my trainer, the guy that's over me, cussing every other word. We got to talking, he asked me, he said, what do you like to do? I said, I like to preach. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I like to preach. <laughs> then never hear him say another cuss word again. <laughs> it's amazing to me. Yeah. Uh, that's how vocal we are. Just come right off the top of my head. 
y'all y'all learning my quirks. I like to say things, and I'm a smart aleck sometimes. It might get me in trouble eventually. But y'all will learn me. I'm playing. I'm joking at certain times. Um, but he said, what do you like? I said, I like to preach. From that moment on, he knew where I stood. That's all I had to say. He knew. And then he started talking about his church and how he loved his church and how he tithed and all. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Enthusiastic. Be excited. Come to the house of God and sit down and shout a little while. Yeah, amen. Yeah, yeah. Don't sit there and just, well, it's another day at the wonderful Webb's Chapel Baptist Church. <laughs> I just love it here. And then no smile. Choir getting no smile. Y'all did good this morning. Thank you. Don't look like you got the mully grubs. Nobody wants to go to a church with a bunch of people that look like they had the mully grubs. I don't want to be around people like that. I don't know about you, but I don't like negative people. We were bowling last night. I'll give you good, and then I'm moving on. It's, it's almost time. We we were bowling last night, and we had a time. We did. When yes. we were bowling, we were screaming. Yeah. We were hollering. We were. We were. I'd roll a strike, and I'd go yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then I'd even roll a strike, and I'd be like, boom, y'all in your face. <laughs> And then they, they were crying because they minute. already had Was well, that the hey, same game? Linda, I didn't see two no. strikes. Linda, I'm preaching. I'm preaching. My story, I'll tell it like I want. But we get excited and, and, and we'd start hollering and hooping. Rose was telling, was it you about volleyball? Yeah. I figured you're tall. I figured that. No, was it was Beth. Huh? Well, and he may have been listening, but it was hey, Beth. It, somebody. And David. But. We, we, at our old church, we had a volleyball team, and we would go play volleyball. Yep. And when they start up, we're going to start a volleyball league. We are. And we'll play, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, it's fun. It's fun. Do you know what I like? I like winning. And yep. when I win, yep. I get excited. Yep. And yep. I scream, and I holler, and I say, yes! Hit the ball! What are you doing? If I lose, I get mad. I'm enthusiastic. I'm excited. You don't go to a football game and sit there like another one. No. You say, go, go, go! Why aren't we like that in church? Right. Yep. Yeah. That's right. If we can do it for worldly things, why can't we do it here? Amen. We go and holler like a Comanche Indian out there and sit like a wooden Indian in here. <laughs> I never understood that. If we can't shout for the greatest thing that ever happened to us, we have to shout about nothing. And I'll go ahead and say this. When you get to heaven, if you don't shout here... You might as well get used to it because your ears are going to be hurting up there too. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be shouting nonstop up there when you finally get to behold the one, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Last one, y'all look with me at verse number nine. For they themselves show us of what manner of entering in we had unto you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his sin from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Here it is again. We need to be an expectant people. Number one, and I've told you, something ought to be preached against every service. So here it is. We ought to expect God to reveal sin and call repentance. God's not going to let you live any way you want to live without having to repent of it. That word repent means to turn completely away from it and go the other way. Right. We often have the idea that that means we come down to an altar, we shed a few tears, we get up and go back into that sin. That is not what repent means. No. Repent means... Turn around and leave it. Right. And ask for forgiveness while you're turning. That's what repent means. Amen. And if you have a secret sin, he said that there in verse number um, 9, he said, How you turn to God from idols to serve the living. Eventually, if you're going to do anything for God, you're going to have to get rid of your idols. Yeah. Whatever that is. Right. That may not even be a sin. That just may be something that you just hold dear and close to your heart. Eventually, God may want you to give that up. I think of that song, When I Lay My Isaac Down. Anybody in here ever heard that song? Oh, I love that song. Brother C.T. can sing it. And uh, when I lay my Isaac down, it's not your Isaac that God wants. He wants you. But in order to get to you, sometimes you've got to lay it down. You've got to repent of it, turn away from it, whatever it may be. We should expect God to save souls. I don't know about you, but I'm expecting God to save souls here. Amen. I'm not expecting it to stay the same people in here. I'm expecting God to bring new people in Amen. and not from other churches. Amen. I'm expecting God to bring new Christians in this right. place Amen. so that they can be what we are and what God wants them to be. Right. Right. My goal is not to go out to the next Baptist church and beg their people to come in. As you see, we don't have any visitors from our church here today. That is not my goal. My goal is to have new, fresh people come in. That's what the apostles did. That's what Jesus did. He went out and found new people, told them about Jesus. That's the hardest thing to do. 
It'd be easy to go out and fill my church up with a bunch of Baptists. Yep. But you know what the problem with that is? They'd be a bunch of Baptists that would not be faithful. But if God really saved them and really changed their hearts and changed their lives, they would be faithful. To Amen. That's, right. That's what I want. God wants to do big things here, and we should keep doing things so that He can do big things. Um, y'all give us another two weeks. We'll be moved in probably. We're moved in, but we'll get all of our stuff unpacked, and we'll be ready to go, and we can start a work here. Amen. Amen. We can do it with your help. Last one, expect God to return. We need to expect God to return at any time. Any time. Any time God could come back. This very moment. We're going to talk a little bit about that tonight whenever we study, continue our study through the book of John. But we ought to be expecting God. That means when you get up in the morning, you ought to look up and think about the Lord coming back. Man, that cloud look. I, sometimes I get up, I'll look at a cloud, I'll be like, oh, that's pretty. Wouldn't it be awesome if Jesus just stepped out right now and called us home? Amen. Like you said in Sunday school, he's not going to touch the ground here uh-huh. during the rapture. He's going to step out on a cloud. They're going to blow that trumpet. And we're going home. Amen. 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 We ought to expect that. Amen. <laughs> in closing, um, April, you come on up and play us something. And we're going to do something different after I do that. Um, in closing of my message, this will be our altar call. You, everybody go ahead and stand up while she's doing it. If you feel led to come, you come. Like I said last last week, I, um, I'm i not going to beg you to come down. God can meet you right where you're at. And I feel like if the Holy Ghost is calling you, you'll come. But four things. We can only obtain salvation through Christ. We must be examples of Christ. We must spread the gospel of Christ. We must expect Christ to do big things. Church is all about Him. This thing's not about Webb's Chapel Baptist Church. It's not about me. And it's not about my wife. It's all about Him. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, April. If you feel led to come, come. morning I did not know that y'all close out your services with Jesus loves me so how long have y'all been doing that years. that's okay we'll keep doing it Let's, I like it <laughs> somebody come up we're not live are we yeah we are turn but I can turn it off